Welcome back to Well, That's Interesting, the Hey, That's Good to Know edition. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to know. It's very good to know. I don't know what we're knowing, <laughs> but I, I'm pumped about it. It's good to know. Uh, today is episode 096, Survival Tips That May Actually Get You Killed. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Yes. Um, whoops. Whoops. Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm. like, um. I'm yeah. trying to think of one. Like, yeah. um, don't go swimming while you're menstruating or else the sharks. <laughs> right. I think that's, yeah, bullshit. We'll get it. We'll get you. Is the opposite true? Should I only swim <laughs> when I have cuts all over my body yes. and my period? Because mm-hmm. the sharks will be like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Did I nail it? You nailed it in every way. I nailed the. (laughs) That's amazing. Uh, I'm Jill Chacha, and I am with the shark expert, Marissa Riley. That's me. Every week is Shark Week with me, Dr. Marissa. Just not a doctor. (laughs) Covered in blood and ready to go. Party on. Uh, If this is your first time listening, Welcome to the flock. Welcome. Dr. Riley here comes in cold and learns everything in real time, just like you. It's true. I had no idea what we were going <laughs> to talk about today. I still don't, but I am <laughs> so excited because my favorite form of survival is not leaving the apartment. That's a really good idea. We're going to actually talk about that. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Am I in danger? No, that, as, a, as a word of advice. Oh, I yeah. thought you were going to be like, the bed is going to eat you or something. And I'm like, it already has. <laughs> I can't leave. I'm one with it. Yeah. Yeah. You put a pin in the uh, sheltering in place thing. That's a good idea. You got it. Yeah, we're gonna, that's going to come up a couple of times. Amazing. Uh, yeah, my friends, today we're going to do our best to... To bust some myths and debunk some pseudo survival techniques and old sayings that we may have heard before. Ooh. So, yeah, this episode will help you live or maybe kill you faster. Either way, it's a win. Both are good to know. <laughs> Both are good to know. All right, let's begin with one of nature's most unpredictable forces tornadoes. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I love a tornado because. <laughs> I'm never around them. It's easy to love something. From afar. Mm -hmm. Never really seen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, many members of the flock listening right now are probably too young to remember when the media went fucking crazy for all things tornado during the mid-1990s. I vaguely remember. Yeah, I know. Because I was so young, not to (laughs) brag, (laughs) in the 90s. Just a wee thing. (laughs) Yeah. For real, there was this uh, film called Twister, released yep. in 1996, starring Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton. Uh, the concept of storm chasing took off as everyday folks experienced the thrill of camcorders with built-in VHS tapes. Yeah. And uh, one may argue this social phenomenon was kicked off thanks to one terrifying recorded event. Oh, no. Yeah. Someone did it. <laughs> Cameras have just ruined our lives. We've become such dipshits. The easier it is to get a camera, the stupider we get. That's I a, feel like that's a good graph. Like the first camera, look, they're chasing, they're chasing tornadoes. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. Now y'all are what dancing and not even that well. Not oh. even that well. Oh my. Oh my. Come at me. Oh no. Come at me on on TikTok. Oh wait, I'm not there. <laughs> Do not unleash. No. Do not unleash. So, I'm kidding. You're all great dancers. So, uh, tornadoes. Tornadoes. So, yes. Quote, in 1991, a local news camera crew survived a tornado by sheltering beneath an underpass near El Dorado Lake, Kansas. The footage went viral, as much as anything could go viral in the mm. 90s, and convinced a lot of people that underpasses were the best place to take shelter. Oh. End quote. Mm-hmm. Now, that was from Red or Use It, the Mighty Goat Man. Uh, on Reddit. I said very, that twice. Very trustable um, uh, username. That's right. 
Yes, my friends, I actually remember this video really well. I was about eight, Aww. and every fucking news channel played this tape over and over. Uh, the opening scene is the point of view of a front passenger. The camera turns around, pointing behind the car, and there it is. A tornado is gaining on them. Oh, I've definitely seen this. Yes. I've definitely yeah, seen it, this. It's a goddamn classic. And although they are in a vehicle and they can reach high speeds, they decide to pull over and hide underneath the only structure for miles, one underpass. Now, their very close encounter and survival was caught on tape, and we're going to watch it right now. Yes! <laughs> I was about to be like, don't make me wait until we're done recording to like Google the shit out of this. Yes. Show me everything. That's right, Dr. Marissa. Are you ready? Sounds like you are. Yes! <laughs> All right. So if any member of the flock wants to go down memory lane with us or view it for the first time, fire up your YouTube and search Code 3, Kansas Underpass, Tornado, April 26th. 1991. Amazing. And we're going to start at a minute 30, because it's a pretty long clip, but we're just going to watch when they're chased and hide under the underpass. I, I love a good chase and a hide <laughs> under right. an underpass. Here we yeah. go. All right. Hold on one moment. Oh my God, it's square. Oh, oh yeah, it's square. The format is the a format is, square. Is, is, is like a, it's like There's a, a better word for that, but like, <laughs> the, the yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, feel free to say pause and talk about your feelings if oh, you I... need to, because this is pretty intense. Okay. Okay. I, I will. All right. This is Code 3, Kansas Underpass Tornado, April 26, 1991. Yes. It's big. All right. So we're driving POV of the driver. Let's pause. Let's go ahead and pause. Okay. So we've got a gentleman giving us the lowdown of the tornado. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, he keeps, he's, he, it's the point of view of the driver and he keeps turning it around. So he's like, you can see where you're going yeah. and then he'll turn it behind him and you can see not like a, like a tornado, like, oh, a tornado, like a really big, thick tornado. Yeah, it's coming. She big. It's coming. And it's really like, there's a funnel cloud, but it is wide. Yeah. It is wide. <laughs> And and um, I, I'm I'm worried. Yeah, let's uh, let's hear the panic in uh, in their voices for in our in yeah. our friend's voice. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Keep going, man. Keep going. Faster. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch faster. Watch faster. Watch faster. Greg's catching us. Oh my God. You gotta go, it's buddy. okay. Pause. So I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just a guy saying lots faster over <laughs> and over <laughs> again. And um, they're the, starting to panic. They're starting to panic mm -hmm. because the tornado is moving towards them, and, like directly beelining towards their car. It, it's looking kind of scary at this point. Yeah, yeah. it looks like All it's right. following. Here them. we go. The tornado closes in. Their only hope is a distant freeway underpass. We gotta really go. We gotta get the dish. Get up under here. Right here, right here. They are under the underpass. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was taken by the story. They have. Okay, pause. Oh my god, I was so absorbed in this video, I forgot we were recording a podcast. <laughs> so they pull up right at this underpass. They ditch the car. Yeah. They are, you know how. So and the, so they go under the underpass. And they're trying to go under, like the crease. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what the little the uh, the corner, the corner of the of where the, the underpass. Where the, yeah, exactly. And also, they're not alone. Like other as, people, uh, there's some kids with them as well. Other people on the road just copied them and just huddled in the corner where the land meets the overpass, basically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. you can see the other cars that have yeah. pulled over, just like oh shit. I guess. All right. Well. Yeah. Uh, what's also cool about this shot, which is at 2.37, uh, we're going to see the tornado. Wait, what? Yeah. <gasps> watch. And then we'll just watch where it goes. These lucky sons of bitches. Watch. Oh, my God. Others also race for shelter, including okay. high school teacher Butch Gilbert and his two daughters. Butch Gilbert. Amazing. <laughs> Shout out to Butch. Okay, so they've really crawled up. Continues to roll his camera. Under. Brace for the tornado's awesome power. Oh my God! The tornado is coming. It's coming straight for the underpass. They are they are locked in, but still. 
Oh my God, it's it's coming, it's coming right for the camera. Along the open turnpike, the vortex flings vehicles about like small toys. Yep, yep. Oh, the as it heads for the underpass. Pause. The tornado is. Yeah. So it looks like whenever I it absorbs like a car, it kind of looks like a blueberry in a blender. <laughs> it like it's just worthless, just yeah. nothing. I mean, blueberries are very expensive. They're not worthless, but just like shattered. Yeah. Uh, let's keep playing. The tornado is getting very close right. to the underpass. Roar becomes deafening. <sighs> oh my God. Where did it go? Is it going over? Ah! I, so I can't see the tornado. I feel like it's right over them. I don't know where it is. I don't. Amazing. What? Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. So the tornado either like, okay, so we watched and then the tornado just kind of disappears from view. I just assume it's like on top of them. And then he turns the camera around to the other direction and it has left. Yeah, it went around them. It went around them. Yeah. Right around them. Like, you know, when you walk around someone. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I had like this really cute visual and I realized it's just walking around someone. Yeah. You know, when exactly. you walk around someone, that's what the tornado did to these people and their lives. <laughs> just walked around their lives. Just. Yep. Exactly. So they were super, super lucky because that tornado changed direction at the last second. So my friends, should this be done all the time? If you're outside, should you take refuge under an overpass? To find the answer, Dr. Marissa, please do us the honors and report from groundzeroshelters.com. I would love to because I really want to know the answer. <laughs> um, okay, from the article, why you should always avoid underpasses during tornadoes, uh, quote, many people mistakenly think that a highway overpass provides a safe haven from a tornado. The reality is an overpass may be one of the worst places to seek shelter from a tornado. Using an overpass for shelter can put you at a much greater risk of being killed or seriously injured. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> Tornado wind speeds can sometimes exceed 200 fucking miles per hour. Um, these destructive winds produce airborne debris that are blown into and channeled under the overpass where people might be seeking shelter. Varying debris, including dirt, sand, rocks that are and, and rocks that are moving at uh, incredible speeds can easily penetrate clothing and skin, causing serious injuries or even death, end quote. So basically that space, the yeah. little cubby under mm -hmm. the overpass or the underpass, I don't know what we're calling it anymore, <laughs> basically sucks in all of this debris that's swirling around yeah. and, and smacks you in the eye with There's it. There's a really good chance of that happening. They were lucky because it went around, it went around them, not through them or the, the whole thing. Yeah, my friends, continuing from the site, if, uh, quote, if an overpass is, if an, sorry, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> if an overpass is directly in the path of a tornado, the wind could change direction by nearly 180 degrees as the vortex passes. Wow. The narrow passage underneath the overpass could cause an increase in the wind speed under the bridge. Wow. End quote. Yeah. So it's bad. I, don't do it. Yeah. I but mean, then what do you do? Do you oh, stay in the car? That's, that's a, we're going to get to that. We're oh. going to get to that. Yeah. My friends, they aren't kidding about the possibility of an increase in wind speed and shift in direction. Let's bookend th this segment with another video. Yes. Because uh, this time we're going to show a crew pulling up to an overpass or an underpass, like you said, whatever it is. Whatever. <laughs> Depends on where you are. Are you over it? Are you under it? Eh. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to watch a crew pulling up to an overpass with people who parked their cars and waited it out under one, but their luck wasn't as good. Oh, no. Yeah. So fire up your YouTube and search Newcastle, Oklahoma tornado. Do not seek shelter beneath an overpass. And we're starting this one at two minutes, 50 seconds in. Oh, my God. And here we are. Okay, so I see 
um, quite a few cars sort of pulled up under the overpass and um, people have kind of left their cars and they're kind of going to that same, looks like they're approaching that same crease area. Yeah, so this is uh, after the tornado has passed and uh, just describe basically what happened to the cars. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is why you cannot park underneath overpasses. Oh. The I-44 overpass, uh, highway, State Highway 76. I'm confused. What's so wrong with these cars? Okay. Because okay. it looks like they're just parked in weird places. Yeah. So there's three cars. Yeah. One of them has a huge dent on the side. Yeah. And that Jeep has been pushed all the way back. Oh, okay. Uh, I just assumed, I, I was like... Maybe the dent. Uh, maybe I just won't judge this person. <laughs> maybe they had a bad day. Let's uh, let's keep watching. Okay. There's definitely one car that will stand out. Okay. Ready? Okay. Right. Yes. So this guy. This guy's a very shaky hand. Yeah, there it is. Oh no! Is that a car? Can we go check on those guys? I mean, is there okay. Pause. So we see a car that is upside down, yep. and the guy is like, should we go check on those guys? Yeah. And we're laughing, but yeah. uh, there's pain it's in, in Jill's eyes and yeah. mine. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're in pain. So are these people, if there's anyone in there. Yeah. So, my friends, don't try your luck with one of these, and maybe take HowStuffWorks.com's advice. Ooh. Quote, in general, it really is a good idea to find shelter in a torn uh, from a tornado. Fair. But the key is that the shelter needs to be a well-constructed building or underground shelter, end quote, as written by Kate Keschner. Okay. So. Shelter. That shelter. Do it. A building. Find it. <laughs> that Drive right. faster to the shelter. That's right. Not to the overpass. Exactly. Just go. Just keep 7-Eleven. driving. 7-Eleven. Perfect. Perfect. Let's go. Uh, well, there's a lot of gasoline, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Maybe they have a basement? Do 7-Elevens have basements? Can you imagine what happens in the basement We're not at gonna a 7-Eleven? We're not going to talk about that. It's, it's, We're not going to. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. So, <laughs> so that takes their, care of that, kind of. So let's stick with storms. What do you say? I love it. Okay. So have you ever heard the phrase, lightning never strikes twice in the same place? Oh, 900%. Yeah. Yes. Now, if your gut is telling you that's some bullshit, you're right. Yes. Uh, Reddit user cat boy in a maid outfit. Amazing. What are <laughs> what the? I need to get Reddit. on Reddit. These people are fun. A uh, cat boy in a maid outfit said it best. Uh, if lightning has found a path to the ground that it likes, it's extremely likely to strike there multiple times. That's why lightning rods work. Okay. Unquote. See, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Like, like if I was lightning and I really liked g pizza. Yes. I go to the same pizza place there you go. all the time because mm -hmm. that's how the world works. Yeah. If you like something, you do it again. Perfect analogy. And lightning is no different. Lightning go. is just a person that's right. <laughs> who wants pizza. pizza. There you go. Podcast over. We're done here. Done. We are done here. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. And thank you, Catboy. And thank you, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, which confirmed that lightning can and often does strike the same place repeatedly, even multiple times during the same storm. She loves that pizza. That's right. <laughs> One of the best examples of this, and New Yorkers know it well, it's our very own Empire State Building. You're right. That's right. Now, the Empire State Building is one of the most photographed places on Earth, especially during storms. Mm -hmm. Back in April of 2011, cameras were rolling and they captured this. Dr. Marissa, I'd like to show you a video of said building. Sometimes it's a little shaky thanks to the wind, but if you can, count how many times she struck by lightning. Nothing would make me happier. All right, Let's here we go. Watch. Doing it. <laughs> show me the force. Uh, all right. Here we go. Okay, so I can see the Empire uh, State Building. It's nighttime. She's cute. Oh, lightning number one hits straight in the top. All right, things are. Oh, two, three. That was. I'm gonna count that one as two. <laughs> 
This is beautiful, by the way. The lightning is purple. Four. We got a fourth one. There you go. Cool. Uh, so I would say between like four and six. There you go. Because some of them looked like doubles. Exactly. You could say so, anywhere yeah. between three and six lightning strikes with the naked eye, right? Yes, exactly. Now, that was during one storm in a few seconds. Uh, but that's actually not a record by any means. Quote, the building was once struck eight times in 24 minutes. That's a lot, girl. So being hit three times within a short time span isn't that unusual, end quote, said Brett Israel of LiveScience.com. Now, Dr. Marissa, please tell us why the Empire State Building is so delicious, for storms, uh, what's happening here exactly? Let's fucking talk about <laughs> it. All right, uh, quote, thunderstorms are caused by rapidly rising and falling currents of air. The friction from this moving air creates electrical charges within a cloud. When the negative charge becomes great enough, it seeks an easy path to the positively charged ground below. The Empire State Building is an ideal escape route. Uh, end quote from Live Science. So the Empire State Building is yeah. positive as fuck. The, <laughs> the well, It's just between the space. Oh. <laughs> but it is beautiful and positive. <laughs> I meant that it's positive in that like the ground is positively charged. Yeah, that, that's true. Is so true. is the Empire State Building positively charged, or is Ooh. it just a means to get to the positively charged ground? I'm thinking that it's a means to get there. Okay. Yeah. To release that energy. Like yeah. like Hor like Thor's hammer. Oh, Thor's God. hammer. <laughs> that's the, that's the like, Thor's, like Thor's like Thor's <laughs> Is that a thing? Oh my god, I'm uh, scared Jay. to Google it. Is there a ho horse hammer? <laughs> Say it. Horse, horse hammer. hammer. <laughs> horse hammer. That is 900% a thing. It has to I, be. We, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Tell me more about lightning. <laughs> so not only is this building ideal, on occasion, the human body can be too. Uh -huh. uh, Noah advises not to wait until a thunderstorm is immediately overhead or for rain to begin to act. Uh, if you hear thunder, lightning is close enough to pose an immediate threat, even if the sky above, above you is blue. Okay, so I don't know if this ever happened to you. I used to live in a town with a lake, mm. not to brag. <laughs> um... <laughs> But whenever, or this would happen in big pools too, but whenever you were swimming in a body of water, yeah. would they ever tell you to leave when yes. like, okay. Yeah. I was acting like I was really special. That's just everyone. You oh, can't yeah. swim when there's lightning. Yeah. Don't do that. Or else you will be, uh, yeah. Uh, fried. Fried. Yes, exactly. It's not good. Nope. Not good at fucking all. So like with tornadoes, you want to look for a structurally sound building. Amazing. So there's a two for for you. You're safe from tornadoes, safe from the lightning. That's, there you go. I mean, that's what I like about New York. It is so many structures <laughs> so many and questionable locks. So it doesn't matter where you are in the city. If you buzz enough time, someone will let oh, yeah. you in because they think you are Amazon. That's right. Or pizza. Or pizza. There you go. Now, the odds of being hit while you're outdoors in any given year are one in a million. Oh. But for some reason, unexplained by Today.com, they went on to say the odds of being struck over a lifetime are one in 10,000. <laughs> that don't make no sense. <laughs> they didn't explain it. They're just like, here's, They're just here's, a, here's a number. <laughs> numbers. So. Um, okay. I'll, I mean, I'm going to think about that for two more seconds yeah. really hard. Let's think about it. Um, all right. Let's go forward. So, and if you think that's crazy, Dr. Marissa, how many Americans do you think died from a lightning strike in 2016? 60. That's actually really close. Uh, really? Yeah, 40. What? Yes. And that's twice the usual statistics. Usually it hovers around 20. Really? That is the number from NOAA.gov. And the uptick, that was also not explained. But 2016 was a shitty fucking year. That so. was a bad year. I think a... more people were just like <laughs> swimming during storms. <laughs> they were like, that's... it doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. just, just outside and screaming at the sky. Yes. <laughs> so. 
in a field. That's right. Because don't you have to be in an open space? If you want, if you like wanted to get hit by lightning, you have to be in I'm kind sure of that, an open space. I'm sure that increases your chances. Sure. Yeah. So just think about it. If you're having, oh no, <laughs> want a little zap? <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No one, no one wants Stay that. Stay home. Order pizza. Make sure it's pizza and not and not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, God. After the break, we're going to talk about hydration in the desert. Okay. Nuclear explosions. No. And uh, alligators. Oh, sure. Stay tuned. Please do. Have you ever wondered what really happened to Amelia Earhart or the lost colony of Roanoke? Do you ever find yourself scouring the internet for vicious Victorians and their murders by gaslight? Or perhaps... You're just sick and tired of women being constantly misrepresented or plain lied about throughout history. If so, join me, Katie Charlwood, history harlot and reader of books on Who Did What Now, the history podcast that's not your history class, part of the Area of Media Network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Adios, au revoir, au revoir, zen, my friends. Bye-bye. I'll be seeing you. We're the All Creatures Podcast. Each week, Angie and I explore and share amazing details about the many animals we share our world with. Plus, Chris and I are both PhD scientists and educators. So we do the deep dives in the scientific research and then come back and share what we learn in a fun and casual way. We also speak with other scientists, animal experts, activists, and many other conservation enthusiasts from all over the planet. So you can find the All Creatures Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, Jill Chacha here from Well That's Interesting, and I am absolutely thrilled to tell you about Spotify for Podcasters. I use it, I love it, and it all started by downloading the free Spotify for Podcasters app, which has all the tools you need in one place to record and edit your masterpiece of a podcast. Spotify for Podcasters also distributes your show to all major platforms. So when you hit publish, your episodes will stream not only on Spotify, but I'm talking about the Apples, the Googles, Stitcher, Good Pods, the other ones. (laughs) You get the idea. And you can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership required. You could also set up monthly subscriptions and record ads just like this one. So what are you waiting for? Download Spotify for Podcasters today and start changing the world. Oh, and please, stay interesting. And we're back. We are so back. We're so back, and we happen to be wandering the deserts of the American Southwest. Oh, I'm moving to it. We're dramatically low on water because we're from the Northeast, and this kind of outdoor activity isn't our thing at all. I'm no longer into it. (laughs) (laughs) But shit happens. Sometimes you find yourself in a desert, no water. Do you crack open a cactus and drink whatever you find inside? Uh, um, Do you? (laughs) That's a lot more than what I would do in the desert. I think I would just lie down and just accept (laughs) Accept my fate. fate. There would be there would be like a gas station like 40 feet away and I'd be like go on without me. (laughs) Oh god my friends unless you're on death's door and I'm talking extreme circumstances you do not. Uh, And we're going to get into the reason why drinking from nearly all cacti might just give you the shits instead of sweet sweet life. Which is like the opposite of hydration. Yeah. It's it's loss of hydration. There you go. How that is the most medical thing yeah. I've ever said. Yeah. <laughs> Am I a doctor? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dr. Marissa, let's cut to the chase. What could happen when chugging cacti water and which cactus is safest if you resort to this method? Let's talk about it from Catasway.com. Oh, sorry, it's Cactus Way. Oh, okay. I was I like, spelled it wrong. I was like, <laughs> they call it something else here. Uh, from Cactus. Sorry, it's totally okay. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> from Cactusway.com, quote. 
Typically, cactus is not a safe substitute for portable water. Drinking cactus water, especially on an empty stomach, can cause severe <laughs> diarrhea and vomiting, leading to more dehydration. There you go. However, in extreme situations, you can always have a few sips from the fish hook barrel cactus. This is the only cactus that is safe to drink water from, but make sure you ingest only small amounts of the water, end quote. So basically, yeah. don't do it. Mm -hmm. Bring water yeah. to the desert. Bring Good water idea. to the desert. Bring water <laughs> to the desert. She's got it. I feel like this advice is kind of like, you know, when you, I don't know, I Google this all the time, yeah. thinking like something will change in the <laughs> results, but I always Google like how to fix a hangover. Oh, yeah. And the first thing is always don't drink. And I'm like, I'm already here. <laughs> like, I don't say that. So don't tell me something I should have done yesterday. Yeah, yeah mom. <laughs> yeah. Send me the pill I can take now. The fast acting pill. That's right. The magic pill. Yeah. Uh, if only. But yeah, my friends, the only prickly friend friend out there. The only prickly friend? The only prickly, prickly friend. friend. The only prickly friend out there who is still kind of sketchy is the fish hook barrel cactus. And luckily, they look exactly like their name. Amazing. Dr. Marissa, you and I have actually seen plenty of these squat cacti. Oh. Uh, but here's a picture. Please tell us, is it covered in fish hooks? And... Uh, all photos today will be on our social media stuffs. I'll also have screenshots of the tornado, the, uh, the lightning situation. So yes. come on by, have a look at this fishhook barrel cactus, too. Let's look at it. I mean, that's it's cute. It's so cute. <laughs> it's so, not to brag, me and how many times have I said not to brag? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Um, Jill and I spent some time in Tucson, Arizona, and we saw quite a few of these. That's the gayest thing I've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> but we saw a lot of these very, very cute little cactuses. They look like tiny little sort of barrels or like um, mm -hmm. balloons. Yeah, they're like a beach ball. Like a size. beach ball size. And they're on the ground, and they're very squat, and they and the their spikes do look like fish hooks. There you go. So, where in this beach ball sized slash basketball sized cacti is the water hidden anyway? Well, I hope you're in the mood to dig because this one stores extra water in its shallow root system. Oh. Quote, the roots are the, sorry, the roots are only a few inches below the ground surface and some of them even pop out of the ground. The roots oh. might not even be vertical. In fact, almost all cacti plants usually develop horizontal root systems. Shut up, I didn't know that. There you go. The roots can be several feet long and are always ready to absorb water from the light showers experienced in the deserts. Whenever it rains, the, root, the roots absorb as much water as they can since they are highly specialized to absorb water pretty quickly. End quote from ca cactusway.com. That is so cool. Do you ever hear something and you're like, that just makes so much sense because, like, if they're growing horizontally, they're closer to the surface. There you go. Where the rain comes not mm -hmm. very often, mm -hmm. and they have to be ready yes. at all times. Constantly. They, they must have the worst root anxiety. <laughs> yes. Oh, my so, God, it's going to happen. It's going to, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I missed so, the rain. So relatable. Yeah. Worried about it. Worried, worried while it happens. Worried after. It's great. We're yeah. all... We're, We're all, all cacti. cactus <laughs> and their roots. Right. Now, if you're wondering about and it, sorry, if you're wandering about and desperately helpless and you just can't go on and you don't see any of these fish hook barrel fellas around, you may be tempted to slice open anything. Yeah. But Dr. Marissa, please tell us why you may end up dead faster. Let's, we should definitely talk about <laughs> that. All right. From our source, quote, the fleshy stem of cacti plants is usually protected by, you guessed it, acids <laughs> <laughs> and alkaloids, uh, which can be quite harmful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it is a, a noxious Am I saying that right? Yeah, you got Noxious, it. Noxious, jelly-like fluid mm. that is still toxic to human beings. Remember uh, that when you are already exhausted and dehydrated, your kidneys are weak. Therefore, if you ingest the liquid, your kidneys will be forced to work harder 
to break it down, which might put you in trouble. This is making my kidneys hurt just talking about it. Seriously. Um, It causes severe diarrhea, vomiting, and can even result in temporary paralysis. Mm -hmm. You don't want to experience any of these symptoms while in the middle of the desert. End quote. I don't want to experience any of these things in my comfortable apartments <laughs> right. that I keep talking about. <laughs> Our apartment is so comfortable. Yeah. I would hate to have diarrhea here. Yeah, vomiting or yeah. paralysis. Ah, no s- thanks. Sweet Jesus. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. x on the cacti. And be sure to bring enough supplies for your desert adventures or misadventures. Uh, you don't want to be shitting your pants. No, so, you know, no. It, it, this, so bring the water. Bring the water. Don't be like hungover me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so shitting your pants brings us to our next logical topic. Amazing. Uh, nuclear explosions. This is the best transition <laughs> I've ever heard. Really well done. Thank you. Thank you. I, could, I, could, I could hear the applause. That's Thank you. Emmy or podcast Emmy. <laughs> Thank you. For a while, that's interesting. Uh, so my friends, back in 2014... An unusual apocalyptic survival technique was circulating online, and it was called the rule of thumb. I actually don't know what this is. Ah. I'm very curious. Quote, look towards the horizon. Okay. Close one eye. Okay. Stick out your arm. Okay. Hold your thumb over the mushroom cloud looming in the distance. Oh. If the cloud, <laughs> if the cloud is bigger than your thumb, run. Run as fast as you can. Okay. End quote. From, from Mumulin of dailycal.org. That was the whole advice. That was the advice. So here's the thing. Mm. Again, not to make this about me, but I'm sure <laughs> our listeners are on the same level yeah. as I am. But if I saw a mushroom cloud at all, mm. I'm not gonna sit, I'm not gonna stand there and measure it. I'm gonna yes. run no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I am obsessed with myself. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to hang on. I'm going to be one of those. I'm going to try to hang on yeah. for as long as possible. Oh, yeah. Do you like how two minutes ago I was like, uh, I would <laughs> die in the desert. <laughs> now I'm like, but when it comes to a nuclear explosion, you I'm, I'm going to live. That's right. She's got I have to live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over this the is, place. This is incredible. <laughs> We're learning a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, my friends, it was rumored if a nuclear bomb's cloud was bigger than your thumb, this would tell you you're in the radiation zone and in immediate danger, and you should run with arms flailing in total panic to safety. Now, with the fear of nuclear attacks from North Korea in the news at the time, people were, like, taking this technique seriously and sharing it online. Okay. But practically nobody knew where it came from. It Uh wasn't until at least a year later... When inquisitive journalists did a little digging to uncover who or what created this so-called rule, the so-called rule, and if it even worked, yeah, I just it just sounds like something from a movie that we uh-huh. like a movie like from the '90s at a time when you like <laughs> yes. you you weren't like googling stuff and then you just kind of believed it, yeah, and then never looked like you know when like one of your parents will tell you something and yeah. you just never yeah. look it up, yeah. That's right. You just believe. Which is called childhood. Yes. <laughs> you just believe that every December an mm. old man mm. is going to come break, and give yeah. you video games. And break into your house. Yeah. And break into your house. Eat your food. And eat your food. While you sleep. <laughs> While you sleep. But he can see you. If you are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, a year later. <laughs> <laughs> Inquisitive journalist did a little digging, and that's when this little guy was found. Oh, my God. Dr. Marissa, I would like to show you a screenshot. Uh, please tell us what you see and what time period you think it comes from. Okay, okay. Okay. I'm so excited. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. It looks very... Okay, mm-hmm. so I, I see what looks kind of like a cartoon. That's right. But it really makes me think of, like, maybe the 60s um, mm-hmm. or the 50s. Uh-huh. 50s based on um there's a there's two people dancing one is a looks like a cis man and he's got a tie and the other is like a you know a a young cis woman she's got 
a little 50s outfit and they've got oh they've got a jukebox mm -hmm. that's very old and there's kids so very nuclear family um and then they're in the forefront of the oh they're in a bomb shelter oh, i'm really i'm really looking <laughs> i'm taking a long time to really look at this picture and then in the forefront of the photo is a guy uh going thumbs up that's right thumbs up and uh, giving us a wink and giving us a wink and that's it right. makes me feel really unsettled so, <laughs> that's right they're yeah. having a party in this bomb shelter and this guy's like yeah that's all Let's all, you know, party, party, party. While yeah, the... while the end of the world. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's all good. Yep, I love how Dad is like smoking a pipe too indoors. There's like no ventilation. <laughs> nope, never so... mind. Uh, asthma or uh, air. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. So, who is this character in the foreground, holding up a thumb and winking? Well, my friends, may I introduce you to Vault Vault Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My friends, may I introduce you to Vault Boy, oh, no. the mascot of the of Voltec Corporation, a company responsible for building bomb shelters across America. Oh, but my friends, Vault Boy is not real. Uh, I he looked like a cartoon <laughs> anyway. Well, he, he's not a real cartoon. He's not a real mascot. Oh, and Voltec Corporation is not a real company. What? He and Voltec are from a wildly popular video game series called Fallout. Oh. Uh, now, this character and the aesthetics were a nod to the Cold War era when very real duck and cover cartoons were drawn up for kids by the very real U.S. Federal Des Defense Administration. But gamers and game lovers alike read into the we're all good wink and thumbs up thing. And thanks to a magical combination of half-assed knowledge about the past and message boards, the rule of thumb was born and it spread to non-gamer communities. Wow. Yeah. There you go. It was so bad, by 2015, the U.S. Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration oh stepped in. Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> God. And was like, we need to do something about this, y'all. And they actually went to the press. Oh, my God. Yeah. An office spokesperson, for example, told Inverse.com, quote, we have been unable to find any truth to the internet rumor. Oh, my end God. Quote. So, Dr. Marissa, according to Mumu Lin, back in 2017... Was the rule of thumb finally put to bed? Let's, let's, I'm just, my, I'm like blown away yeah. right now at this. Okay, quote, the rule is a myth. <laughs> There's no proof of this being something that the U.S. government ever told citizens. How close you are to nuclear radiation depends on a number of factors such as the size and type of the bomb, your surroundings, and the direction and force of the wind, etc. End quote. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go. I was right. Just run, no matter what. <laughs> Just run. Now, my friends, your thumb doesn't mean shit. If a muffroom, if a muffroom, a muffroom. What, is, what is with me today? A muffroom. I kind of <laughs> like that a little bit better. It's a little less intimidating. Uh, my friends, your thumb doesn't mean shit if a mushroom cloud is visible in the far distance. If someone wants to stand there and measure impending doom with their digits, please grab them. And here's what you can do instead. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Now, odds are... If you had no idea a bomb was coming, you probably don't know its size, so that doesn't help. Yeah. But even if the bomb was, for example, 10 kilotons or half of what was dropped on Nagasaki, oh, the, fallout, <laughs> <laughs> the fallout could travel up to five miles into the air, which could then travel about 10 to 20 miles downwind. That's actually really good to know. There you go. So if you're within 20 miles of a whoopsie-daisy on a windy day, Ruth McBurney, the executive director of the Conference of Radiation Control Program, told Inverse, quote, shelter is the preferable strategy if you, if you think you may be in an area where a fallout may be present or approaching, end quote. So mm -hmm. the answer is always go inside. That's right. Stay inside. Again. Don't live your life. Stay inside. There's a theme. Watch TV. <laughs> Order the pizza. That's right. Yep. Uh, Neil V. Patel of Inverse goes on to say, you should then, quote, continue jumping between temporary shelters that can provide more protection from the radiation. Eventually, you'd want to make your way out of any hazardous areas within a few days, if possible. End quote. I, I like that approach. Yeah. It's simple. Go inside. 
go to another inside. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty easy. Until you're away. <laughs> easy. Think, yeah. Put it on a tote. Now, all of this advice was further corroborated seemingly out of the blue after I initially wrote these notes over a month ago. Ooh. And that's because randomly, out of fucking nowhere, the New York City Emergency Management Department, that's right, where we live, yeah. Dr. Marissa. Okay. <laughs> the okay. New York City Emergency Management Department released a nuclear preparedness PSA video. Are you shitting me? On July 11th, two days ago. Here I was feeling so safe. <laughs> Because there's no tornadoes here. And now, oh my God. Yeah. Yep. Oh my God. Way to like stress me out. Oh, Come on. You're not the only one. Um, a lot of people were wondering why. Yeah. Why? 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 Um, and we'll get into it. Uh, but first, do you want to see the PSA? I mean, <laughs> do you want to see the video? I really want to see it. I'm not going to I'm. Am I happy about it? No, but yeah. I really need to see this. All right. I'm just imagining, like, you know how on airplanes they don't dem- demonstrate um, how to buckle your seatbelt as much anywhere? They yeah. just play a really hilarious video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm imagining it's like that, but, like, for Fallout. Oh, it's... Uh- <laughs> It's it's pretty it's pretty great, especially the opening. But well, yeah, let's get to it. So, okay. if anyone else would like to watch along with us, fire up your YouTube and search "Nuclear Preparedness PSA NYC," and it should pop right up. Please watch with me. All right, let me. Let's see. Is that a good volume? I'll make it a little louder. Okay. Okay. Let's just have a listen. What okay. do you say? Yep. Right off the bat, I want to say we're frozen <laughs> on some beautiful brownstones. Yeah, Already right. stressed. All right. Here we go. Okay, lots of apartments. We're looking at apartments. apartments. So there's been a nuclear attack. Don't ask me how or why. Just know that the big one has hit. Okay. You know, and she's like, you heard her. There's been a nuclear attack. Don't Don't ask ask how or why. (laughs) Don't ask. Okay, let's watch more. Okay, let's do this. So what do we do? There are three important steps that I want you to remember. Okay. Step one, get inside fast. Okay. You, your friends, your family, Get inside. All right. And no, staying in the car is not an option. No wonder You need to get into a building (laughs) and move away from the windows. Why is she smiling? Step two. Pause. (laughs) She is in a very cool apartment. Um, She has gone inside herself, and she's in um, what looks like a very expensive apartment. It looks like a warehouse like a rooftop warehouse yeah. situation in williamsburg very or tribeca to be honest yeah could be yeah and in a, a very expensive couch i know that because it's big yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay we're up to step two stay inside oh yeah stay inside here we go stay inside shut all doors and windows have a basement head there If you don't have one, get as far into the middle of the building as possible. If you were outside after the blast, get clean immediately. Remove and bag all outer clothing to keep radioactive dust or ash away from your body. Step three, stay tuned. Follow media for more information. Don't forget to sign up for Notify NYC for official alerts and updates. And don't go outside until officials say it's safe. All right, you've got this. What? I do? When? <laughs> when am I going to get this? And then she walked away. And, and then, then she walked away, and then she left the nice apartment. <laughs> um, and I feel bad because uh, she probably doesn't live there. I think it was a green screen. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, I hate this. <laughs> so, what the fuck is up with this. So well, em- yeah. Emma Emma Illich Frank of the Gothamist reached out to the agency, which prompted a response from Christina Farrell. Oh, sorry, Christina Farrell. Farrell? 
Pharrell. That Christina sounds good. Pharrell, the first deputy commissioner in the Office of Emergency Management, quote, the PSA was released because of questions the agency has been getting at events and trainings, but not due to an elevated risk of nuclear attack. That sounds like a lie. <laughs> questions, you know. Um, continuing the quote, this is one threat that, understandably, New Yorkers feel the least prepared for and have asked us about. She said, it's a very low probability that something like this would happen in New York. End quote. So, uh, does everyone feel better? No. <laughs> no. Um, on top of, like, everything we've been worried, <sighs> worrying about, like, being the new hub of abortions in uh, yeah. the United States and worrying about abortions yeah. in other places. And um, what else is yeah. going on? Health, healthcare. Healthcare. Being completely oh, the dismantled. pandemic. The pandemic. Uh, the Supreme Court. And now, bombs. Mm-hmm. There you go. Feeling great. Well, let's end with some good news. Okay. And alligators. <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> Now, for some other goddamn reason I can't explain, there's advice on the internets to run zigzag <gasps> when fleeing our scaly friends. Okay, I hear this about every big thing that can eat you. <laughs> like, I've heard this about lions and mm. um, other stuff. <laughs> yes. So, so here's the thing. Let's... Um, okay, let's, let's continue. It's, okay. it's pretty funny. Honestly, running in this case is actually a good idea. Oh. Because, Dr. Marissa, please remind us of what alligators like to eat. I would love to talk about this. All right, quote, Alligators primarily hunt at dusk or during the night. They lie motionless in wait for prey. That's amazing. I I respect that. Jealous. Uh, Continuing the quote, An alligator's diet depends on what is available to it, which means it will eat just about anything, including fish, frogs, birds, turtles, insects, snakes, small mammals, other alligators, okay, (laughs) (laughs) white-tailed deer, wild hogs, and sometimes people's pets. I'm so sorry. Uh, once Once the prey is caught, it is typically swallowed whole. When Uh, prey animals are too large to be swallowed whole, the alligator will stash its kill underwater, pinning it under a submerged log or anywhere it can be wedged for safekeeping. So it's kind of like a fridge. Cool. Um, The alligator must then wait until the prey's animal's hide is rotted and soft enough for the alligator to tear off chunks. End quote, from the University of Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it sounds like they have a totally different plan that yeah. does not involve my ass running. Exactly. They are not interested in running after you, no. which is a good thing. Uh, you know. So let's get to it. Now, you're probably wondering what the good news is. Uh, it turns out the speed of an average gator running and the speed of an average person hauling ass clocks in at about the same, which is about seven to nine miles per hour. Okay. And gators, well, land really isn't their thing. Most likely they'll run for a short burst, telling you to fuck off, and zigzagging just makes you look even more of a fool. So as long as you're running away from the water, you should be safe. Straight line. I love that. Yeah. I love running in a straight line. Yeah, I'm very go. good at it. <laughs> especially when I'm worried. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. The end. The end. <laughs> what an episode. Wow. Oh my God, I know. The places we've been today. Just everywhere. Just I am exhausted. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Thank you for listening, rating, subscribing, telling your friends how to survive alligators. Nuclear explosions for some reason. Yeah. Um, what the fuck else? Tornadoes. Tornadoes. Lightning. Um, desert. Oh, yeah. The desert. Yeah. Bring water. <laughs> or stay home. Oh, even better. Yeah. There you go. And please, stay interesting. Ugh, please do.